hi, my name is Laura Schechter and I consider myself a perceptual realist, which means I'm painting usual vision, and what I usually paint is one moment of light. I know I have a, an, a reputation. I'm the old lady who could paint anybody's graffiti. <laughs> Until about 10 years ago, I was a still life artist where I was observing my still life, and then I switched over to uh, cityscapes. My husband had some photographs of uh, the cityscapes, specifically one, of the Gowanus that I chose, uh, you know, from the F train. And I found it very interesting trying to do something I knew nothing about. And it took me about seven years before I felt I was really halfway competent in doing um, the cityscape. I had to learn how to paint the sky, I had to learn how to paint trees, if there was a little car there. And then about four or five years ago, I got interested in graffiti. And, and what it is, it wasn't just the isolated graffiti, it was graffiti in the context of the city. This started because I happened to do one painting of graffiti, and I exhibited at the National uh, Academy, and the curators told me about this place that I should check out, and it turned out to be Five Points, which was the most important graffiti site in the world until it was um, just taken down about two years ago. And then I got really interested to see what was happening in different neighborhoods with graffiti and I started walking around. And it took me a while and I realized that my relationship with graffiti had to do with what it was doing to what I would call blighted neighborhoods. It was beautifying them. Because a lot of the work was being done in abandoned factories or any kind of abandoned area. And I started thinking about that a lot, and I started responding to the fact that graffiti is uh, a continuation of, uh, within 10,000 years of art, of being involved with decorative motifs. And especially the early graffiti, the, the amount of colors were very limited, in air, what we now call aerosol art. They were high key colors, there was a, a red, there was a turquoise, and there was a black. And so having that kind of limited color, people were maximizing their experience. So I, I really appreciate a well-developed wall. I think all walls start random, but I think when the greed graffiti artists come to them, they see the general composition of the wall, and when they put their tag down, that's not random. They are designing that wall. And so I will come back to some things that I like every year. Like one of the best things is the Manhattan Bridge looking into Chinatown. A few places like that, of course, I don't have uh, five points anymore. Now that the graffiti artists don't do their work on the train, they do it so it can be seen from the train. They do it so they can be seen from the, the uh, expressways. And so what I'll do is I'll take a train and it'll be really good. Or then I'll take a train where I don't know something. It's like an experiment. I took the number four train up to the Bronx. And then I would get off and then I would walk underneath. <laughs> and then you can still get things doing that. It's an endless surprise, you know, what I'm going to come across. And then I started getting really involved with the graffiti trucks. I had certain paintings where they were just not worthy enough to be a painting. And the minute I put in one or two graffiti trucks, they were perfect. In May, I went to London for a week. And one of the reasons that I decided that London would be a good place to go is I really like the way graffiti looks on old brick and old wood. I don't really like the way it looks on some new building. It, brick Lane was a place that's the most popular. I mean, you go there on a Sunday and there's like 20,000 people. And Shoreditch was before that. And then I learned about other neighborhoods. And, and one of the really re remarkable one is Waterloo Station tunnel and that's called the graffiti tunnel it was like you know going into the vatican you know you know the sistine chapel it was covered the, the sides and the ceiling and every single surface and it's black 
and it had these bright lights. One of the things that I, I was beginning to get this feeling that there was a big difference between London and New York. And, and I mean, graffiti now is really all over the world. So I, mean, so I think in, gen, in general, we could say New York is the only place where it really naturally came up from the poor, in poor neighborhoods. And it evolved slowly, you know, and whatever, whatever it is. And, but, but I'm looking at this London graffiti, and I'm saying, well, what is it that I'm seeing that's different? And what I'm seeing is different is that they make an outline, and then they fill it in. <laughs> well, here, the graffiti artist uses their whole arm, and they get in the motion of their arm, and they also get in all the small things that the aerosol can will do. A drip, a fade out, <laughs> and it's what makes New York graffiti more interesting. But what, what London makes out is that there's so much of it, and so many people are doing it, that it becomes this huge visual experience.